Now, it's fair to say that the British Prime Minister David Cameron has had better weeks. In an embarrassing airing of dirty laundry, leaked recordings of the Polish foreign minister revealed, with a string of expletives, that he believed Mr. Cameron had badly handled his EU policy. His strong stand against the appointment of Jean-Claude Juncker is likely to leave him wrong-footed and isolated. And to the jeers of a packed parliament, Prime Minister Cameron had to apologize for ever even appointing Andy Coulson as his director of communications. That's after Coulson was convicted of phone hacking in a sensational and costly trial here in London this week. So with the UK, a key US ally, and wanting to play a major role on the world stage, I'm joined now by James Blitz. He's the lead writer at the Financial Times, and we want to see how this will affect Britain's profile and its clout. Welcome. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. First, let me ask you about this trial and the conviction of Andy Coulson. Of course, today, some other charges were thrown out. He'll have to probably go to trial again. But is this going to have a lingering effect despite the embarrassment on the, on the Prime Minister? I don't think so. It's certainly embarrassing. Andy Coulson was appointed as David Cameron's head of communications when he was in opposition in 2005 and then went to Downing Street with him. And many people said to David Cameron at the time, you really must be careful. This man was editor of the News of the World newspaper. He had to stand down. There were allegations of phone hacking. This could come back to hurt you. David Cameron ignored that and stuck with him. He really relied on Andy Coulson's advice hugely when he was in number 10. Now, it's embarrassing for him that Andy Coulson has been convicted in the phone hacking trial and he has to apologise. But you have to ask yourself the question, how much is the British public really following this kind of thing? At the end of the day, this is seen by a lot of British people as a kind of Westminster-centric Westminster issue involving politicians and the press, not something that affects their real lives. All right, but so does Europe affect their real lives? How much is the British public following what also looks like a very inside politics fight over how much to belong to Europe and the Prime Minister trying to make a strong stand against who actually is appointed to lead Europe? How is that going to go for him and how much does that matter to the Brits? Well, that's a, a much more important question, I think, uh, and a much more important issue for him. You have to remember, first of all, that Europe is a toxic issue in British politics. We've had, as in a number of European countries, a very significant performance in the European elections by the United Kingdom Independence Party, which is against our membership of the European Union altogether. So this is a big issue. A, really a rise of the far right and the, and the Eurosceptics this time around. E exactly. So, so, so this is a, a, an important issue. And what's happened here is that David Cameron is saying... I don't want this man, Jean-Claude Juncker, to be president of the European Commission. He's not somebody who's going to take Europe forward in the way we want to. He's one of yesterday's men. He's not a liberaliser. And so he's fought this tremendous pitched battle against this man becoming president of the European Commission, and he's probably going to lose it. He's probably going to lose it, but was he right to fight this pitch battle? I mean, the, what does the FT say about Juncker being the head of the EU Commission? Well, the view of the newspaper is that he shouldn't be, that in the end, uh, and, and, and that is our editorial stance, that really Europe does need to come up with somebody who is more modernising and doesn't represent the past. At the end of the day, Juncker is seen as an integrationist. He's seen as somebody who's very much uh, connected with backroom deals, the old ways of doing things. And you need a president of the European Commission who is going to give Europeans, who have voted significantly for, as you said, anti-European parties, a sense that something new is happening. The trouble is that Cameron's tactics, not just on this, but generally, and this is coming to the point that Radek Sikorski was making, have really not been helpful to his case. Right, so the Polish Foreign Minister, Radek Sikorski, in all these leaked tapes, uh, you know, all sorts of swear words all, all over the place, judging David Cameron's tactics and his negotiating skills, basically saying they were wrong, he was wrong-footed. Yes. I don't think he's just talking about the Juncker case in those tapes, from what one can see. He's talking about the way Cameron has approached the European Union, going right back. Not yeah. the yes, exactly. What's happened, I think the argument of many Europeans is, we sort of understand what you're saying about Juncker, but you have been so against everything in the European Union, Prime Minister Cameron, that we really can't back you. He's gone for the referendum in the United Kingdom in 2017, saying we've got to renegotiate our position. He stood up very firmly against financial transactions tax, which the European Union wants to introduce. He stood up against changes to the constitutional structure a couple of years ago. 
it's been a kind of one-man fight, and this very shrill tone has gone down very badly with European leaders, even those like Angela Merkel, who actually privately don't think Juncker should be the man. Right. So this leads to the very, very important situation about Britain's relationship with Europe. Throwing red meat to the Eurosceptics to try to quiet down his right-hand side, his right flank, what does the FT say about just the way this referendum might go? He's now committed to this referendum. What if they vote no? What will that do to Britain? Well, referendum on staying in Europe. I, I think, think we have to sort of get our ducks in the row, first of all. Obviously, there will only be a referendum in the United Kingdom in 2017 if the Conservatives are elected at next year's general election. So that's something that has to be said. If that happens and Cameron comes back, it is going to be a very tough fight. He's not been very clear about what it is he actually wants renegotiated. There's clearly some repatriation of powers some sort of restrictions on migrants coming in and so forth into the country, um, some repatriation of powers, greater say for Parliament. A lot of European leaders believe in that. But the trouble is, as you say, and again going back to the Sikorsky tape, he's constantly having to throw red meat to the Eurosceptics. And so the question you ask yourself is where will this end? But the real problem at the end of the day is that the Juncker nomination at the end of this week will be the start of a difficult period for him. He will have to explain to the British public why he was against this man and why now Britain should stay in the European Union when this man is in charge. I don't envy him that challenge and that no, task. James Blitz, leader writer for the FT, thank you very much indeed Pleasure for explaining to, be here. to thank us. You. Thank you.